Good afternoon from the Viner Four Gates Studios. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. Maryland falls in overtime to Rutgers 27 24 to end the regular season. I'm Wayne Viner. Along with me, Mason Viner. I cannot believe we lost that game. Um, but I'll let you go first, Mason. Yeah, real bad performance for Maryland is what I'll say. Um, too many penalties, too many mistakes. Just flat out wasn't good enough. They weren't the tougher team. They weren't poised to win the game. When they had the opportunities, they simply dropped the ball. They got stupid penalties. And look, they played losing football. You know, I, I'm i the biggest proponent of how you play winning football and the things they've done right this year. Uh, but today they didn't do those things. They committed way too many penalties. And, and at the end, that's really what got them. Way too many penalties. You think 12 for 135 sounds like the Oakland Raiders with Al Davis. That's a lot of penalties. Look, there's one thing that you know, I've got a lot of Twitter and a lot of people calling. Maryland forced, count them, five. That's five fumbles from Rutgers. That's usually enough to beat anybody. And I've used the example, you could have beaten the Pittsburgh Steelers in the Steel Curtain if you got five turnovers. Maryland recovers none of them. That's zero. And the one Maryland recovers ends up being an incomplete pass, and Maryland manages to get a 15-yard penalty on that. And the penalty stands, and the fumble recovery is overturned. A bizarre set of circumstances today. No Leah at quarterback. The entire Four interior linebackers he started the season with. Shaq Smith never plays. I think it's COVID-related. I don't know. Ely out. Campbell out. Your guy, Hippolyte, out. There's kids playing that I haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know about a site of Smith. Uh, actually, a safety, I believe. Played linebacker today. A guy with last name of Thomas. I'm not even sure who that is. Uh, Gote had a lot of run. Cortez Andrews, who's always talked about as a highly rated recruit, got in there a bit. Maryland does enough to win, forces five fumbles, recovers none. The bigger story for the Terps, other than losing the game, is the emergence of Eric Najarian, a DeMatha quarterback. Where's the 22 jersey? What do you make of his emergency of appearance in the Maryland back? I think he did a fantastic job. He, he gave what's a really talented group chances to make plays. Uh, one thing that I have to bring up is why did that penalty stand? Because at the point, uh, if that ended the play, the incomplete pass, why does the uh, blindside well, block stand? Well, it's a personal foul. Anytime you have a personal foul during or after a play, you can get a personal foul, and Maryland's done this, before the game starts. Uh, I guess you can't get one after the game. You can get a personal foul during halftime, and a personal foul is always enforced, even if the play didn't happen. Um, Najarian comes in, he's a kid that I saw at practice and said, oh, he's interesting. I love the 22 jersey. I always like quarterbacks 21, 20, even the, the 19s and up, because you just never see it in real life, but you do in college. He goes 12-23, 217 yards, two touchdowns. Could have been three touchdowns, I believe uh, uh, Dante Demas, who for most of the game was Rutgers' best player. Uh, once again, just kidding, folks. But uh, he's tipped, in my count, five balls up in the air in his, in about a year, about one season of games. Two of them returned for touchdowns. Uh, the rest of them intercepted. Uh, it's just a bad look. Keeps happening to him. Jake Funk looked spectacular, 180 yards. Do you know what happened to him? That was 17 carries for 180. It, yeah, it something. seemed like he came up limping after his touchdown run and just never returned to the game. That really was the dagger to Maryland's offense and really their, and really just being able to close out the football game. No Penny Boone, no Isaiah Jacobs. Uh, I assume they were unavailable because of COVID. Don't know that. It's just a tough game to look in the mirror after and say hey, this is where this program is because this is a team – that they played in Rutgers, that if you look at the two rosters and compare them, your guys are better than them at about 11 out of 11 positions. No, I mean, it's 10 out of 11. I think Rutgers had three quarterbacks, even though they might not have played it today, three quarterbacks better than what we had on the field. 
Fair enough. And at the end, I think Pacheco was better than Fleet Davis. I, I just think once Maryland got in the twos and threes, because really they started a lot of what you would call second or third stringers. Once those guys rotated out, like I said, you had guys that I had to look up. I know about 80, 90 of the 105 players. I'm sure you do too. But there were guys who were playing that we didn't know who they were. Mm. And uh, later in the game, those guys were on the field for real plays. And it's really great Which when they I come in. Understand. I really didn't understand at, at some point in that game why the number one guys weren't out there. I think that there's just a handful of plays and, and just coaching errors in this game. Coaching errors. That's a, that's a good point. Some clock I management. Patients uh, were off near the end of the game. I, I just don't. I don't understand on third and five. Here we go. This is the biggest. Why that, that's the play, and, and there's just a handful of them. Okay. You know, there's Maryland the other has one. the lead. Third and five. About two minutes and twenty seconds left or so. They hand the ball off on third down up the middle. Fleet goes nowhere. Rutgers player grabs his ankle or whatever and falls over. The clock stops on that penalty. Mm-hmm. We got a punt. I believe at this point it's like, was it 202? I can check the play sheet. But it was around two minutes at this point. And Rutgers uses their last time out to stop the clock. Maryland punts. And Rutgers makes their way down the field and kicks a field goal. You think that Maryland should have actually tried to get the first down as opposed to what is the closest thing to a kneel down they could have done, which is just run up the middle. Well, it actually wasn't a run up the middle. It was that trap play that they ran the whole game. Johnny Jordan just got blown off the ball, which actually Johnny Jordan tackled Fleet Davis, if you go back and look at the tape. Um, I always give a quarterback that can run a chance out on the edge with the receivers that Maryland has. Uh, And I think that there's just spots like that where you're always going to go back and look at as a coach, and you have to, again, you have to review what happened in this game. But I saw it from guys like Jermaine Carter and Trey Watson on Twitter that are really behind Coach Loxley. You can't blame the coaching for this game. The, the coaching put players in positions to make plays, and they did not execute. And that comes from your own alumni that are recent in the NFL right now. When you got guys saying that out on social media and just putting that out there, it falls under the players. You know, you get, what was it, three blindside blocks on one player in a game? Well, I, I, that last one, yeah, he got one before. And uh, Mo Kite got one on that interception. And we're talking about Jay Sean Jones. The last one, his head, shoulder was in front of the guy that he hit. At some point, that's not, yeah, he started from the back, but he ended up in front of him. Now, they were, they were looking for that. The rest were obviously looking to see because Maryland has a reputation of having some hard blocking receivers. And, yeah, we uh, got caught on it. But anyhow, lost the game in the end. Yeah, in the end, this is one of the few games where the effort was there and you just lost. And sometimes in sports, I think those are the hardest games where you feel like you did enough right to win and you lose. Yeah. But that's life. And and if you're really looking at a team and a program that's trying to build something, next week's a really important game now. How do you respond to that? Okay, so Bruce isn't here. He's at the press conference or video at the press conference right now. He's saying that with these COVID problems, he's not sure Maryland's going to play. With all these guys out still, your take is, and I know this, but I'll let you say it, is that you play the games you can play. Yeah, if I'm one of those guys that doesn't get their chance, it it really depends on who you are. And Bruce just likes to point out that they just shouldn't play because they're going to get beat. And and if there's COVID issues, you just shouldn't play because that's what some other programs do in in some lines of thinking is of the Herb Street and Bruce and, and some other people out there. My take on it as somebody that sat on the bench for a lot of games, as you know, Wayne, is we got to play. I mean, I go out there and I practice, so if somebody goes down, I get to play. This isn't the NFL. This isn't professional. They're not postponing this. For some of these guys, especially some of those reserves that you may or not heard of, they're in their second, third, fourth year in this program. They're almost done. Give them their opportunity. You know, everybody knows that um, when there's guys out, the game kind of gets written off. So let those guys go out there and play. I think Maryland's a competitive football team, and – 
these guys who have had three games canceled already this year aren't going to go out and just say we can't play. They won't fold. That's not that's not the personality I want my team to have. Okay. I'm very impressed with the, the plays that were made. I'm impressed that Scotty Montgomery, even though he took some heat last year, Lance didn't play well. To me, he was a step slow, a day late, dollar short on everything. The, he, he made the play one second after he should have made it. The throw's right behind. He didn't get on a rotation over to Demas in time, throws the ball high, it gets picked off. He, had, he looks to throw the ball, he double clutches, and he gets hit just a little off. Doesn't mean he can't play, but he wasn't ready today. Big props to Maryland to go to the bench. I mean, to take a four-star recruit out and put in a kid who's a walk-on, um, and it worked for most of the game, much like bringing an Alex Smith-type player. And I remember years ago, Maryland uh, goes off of uh, Jordan Steffi and goes with Sam Hollenbach because he could just get the ball out on time in the right area. And, you know, Najarian did a lot of that, just got the ball in the right area. Not the most impressive throws he ever saw, but it got there. I, I liked it. I liked the fight in Banaje Gote at linebacker, gets seven tackles. I like Mosley was six playing linebacker hybrid. Now, did some of these guys try to make a play they really couldn't make, hit a guy a little late, sort of you know, were on the field too long? Yeah, but there was nobody else to put in. In a decimated, I mean, this isn't the strongest roster to begin with. So they got max effort out of this, despite the penalties. They got max effort. And no, they didn't coach him to jump off sides five times. Uh, those penalties are, are maybe because it hasn't been regular practice for a while. Well, I think this. the other thing that you have to look at, and this is one thing where the TV broadcast and, and this, the reporting pool didn't do Maryland any favors, is look at some of the guys that weren't out there that weren't like the big headline story. Your Penny Boone, your Isaiah Jacobs, Go to the offensive line. Ja'Kai Green, a true freshman, was out there for – must have been half of the game. Mason Lunsford's out there. He's a redshirt freshman. Uh, no Marcus Minor again. Austin if you Fontaine. look at some of the other spots, you can see where some of the second-team guys were out, and, and that's really what gets you. You know, the, as a football team, and you know this and so do I, uh, you prepare – to have your second guys out there if something happens. The third guy, that that's where it gets a little shaky. And for some spots in Maryland, the fourth guy, that guy's just not ready to go usually. Well, well it's again, the group of middle linebackers, there's got four of them are out. And then you do what you can. You play safeties at linebacker. You do what you can. Tarheeb's still absolutely stud star today, especially in the first half. He was all over the place. Our guys from Independence, Amy Finau in the middle, Mo Kite, big games. Darrell Chime, I believe he forces three fumbles. Not bad, just not enough to win. Um, so that's enough of beating this dead horse. That was an actually, it was fun, and we lost, but that was an engaging game. Uh, hats off to, to the kids. If this is the last go-round, I don't know if they're going to play next week or not. I don't know if they're going to play in a bowl or not. If this is the last time through for Jake Funk and the rest of those guys and Johnny Jordan, it's been a pleasure watching them. They're actually scholars, gentlemen. They're, they're what you want out of the kids that play for your team. And on that note, uh, and, and I have to say it, props to Rutgers for hanging in there. Maryland had the momentum, thought Maryland had the game, and Rutgers fought back and uh, scored the last six points to take it. Uh, Monday night. Rutgers basketball comes to College Park, uh, and we'll have a lot of coverage on that. I'm sure the Young Terps will do a lot of uh, talking about that one. And uh, is that it for today? Yeah, tough game to look at, but it was just a lot of fight out there, and, and you got to love it. But to some extent, you shoot yourselves in the foot enough that that team should beat you. You know, it's one of those games that uh, Rick Doc Walker and people that like to really look at football say so you beat yourself. You got one, one of those five fumbles, you win this game. And that's, that's enough right there. Uh, that and Dante Dimas dropped a touchdown pass. 
five fumbles and one touchdown pass, you'll win the game. This yeah, the last a- thing that I got to say is on my first play in overtime, I was throw the ball to the end zone when I have a chance to win. I think Maryland has – my only kind of comment on what they did wrong was you have all these great receivers. You just don't throw the ball down the field enough. They had a guy who never – played before today at this level and he threw the ball enough i, I don't want to said you know, try and end this if they don't call that penalty on jay sean Philippe davis ran for 12 or 14 yards on first down it was enough dianu it would have been enough but it, not not today it wasn't all right on that note we want to thank uh, viner Forgates as always hometown it consulting you need a durable, reliable partner for your business computer needs. Call Viner Four Gates, national toll free number at 877 797 8776. We would also like to thank Meyer Consulting Engineers, as always. And it's the Big Dog Post Game Show. Thanks to Rick Jacklich and uh, all the lawyers over there at the Jacklich Law Group. And we will see you on the radio, on the podcast. Uh, when's your next Young Turks? Not exactly sure yet. Jordan uh, moving out of Fargo, heading into Temple, into the next stint of his life. So we'll try and get one in tomorrow. But um, if not, then after the basketball game on Monday. All right. I'm Wayne. That's Mason. I'll see you on Turp Talk on 1300 CBS Sports Radio on Wednesday night. We'll talk Maryland basketball and what's next with his football team. Good evening. Maryland falls in overtime, 27-24 to Rutgers, ends the regular season at 2-3. Good evening.